Hello, and welcome to the Saturday Afternoon SED Talk. I am Dr. Cedric Wood, and I'm coming at you from Dallas, Texas, my office with my beautiful view. And I'm going to talk again about the terrible tra uh, tragedy, the shooting in Uvalde, Texas. But in particular, I'm going to respond to Dr. Worrell, who's the president of APA. Dr. Frank Worrell, who wrote a response to the shooting. It's the title, May 25th, APA again calls for gun reform in the wake of the Texas mass shooting. Okay, right there, that caught my attention. I'm so glad that Dr. Worrell decided to make a statement for all psychologists. APA represents the field of psychology in the United States. So, good. But I'm a little confused by the letter. He starts talking about the need to control firearms and for gun control. Does APA sell guns? Do we <clears throat> deal with the distribution of guns? No, I don't think we do. Then why are we talking about that? Okay, well, there is a need for gun control and reforms. I get that. That does make perfect sense. Thank you for reminding me. But shouldn't the president of the lead psychological association in the country be talking about psychological factors? Hmm. And forgive me for being a little sarcastic, but I am just so confused by that. What do we, as psychologists, need to be doing to stem the tide of all violence, and gun violence in particular? Well, I would like to think that they would be convening meetings all across the country, attended by psychologists, counselors, and family therapists, to discuss what we can do. Well, I would like to offer two things that Dr. Worrell should be pushing for to solve this problem. I've been pushing for this for 22 years. Pass a law in each state that requires a class in every high school in mental health. Now, what do I mean by that? Some people would say, well, we have classes in psychology. Okay, I'm not talking about that. Kids that aren't psychologically minded report to me they were bored in their psychology class. They cover things from senses and perceptions to the wonderful Dr. Maslow, all the way over to hypnosis. Okay, these are all interesting things to me and all the psychologists across the country, but that's not what 16 and 17 year olds need to be learning. Okay? What they need to be learning is four things. Here's the four quarters. Number one, healthy personality development. That has a lot to do with child development. How do we grow as healthy human beings? Don't go through a child development class that, that lays out the normal progression from three to six and from, no. Healthy versus unhealthy personality development. Number two, healthy relationships. Every young person should be learning about how do you create a relationship with someone that you're falling in love with um, so that there's not conflict. The state of Texas, I'm so proud of us that we passed Senate Bill 9 calling for a class in every school to try to stem the tide of domestic and dating violence, child abuse, and trafficking. Good for us. I just hope somebody will call me. I've been trying to find out who is writing the curriculum. I'm here. I've written some of the curriculum, and I'd like to contribute. Will you call me? Uh, but I hope that this class that should be mandated would cover these things in that quarter of the semester. The uh, third quarter is parenting, healthy parenting. What a great idea. A child who's growing up who wants to get a gun and kill people did not experience healthy relationships with his caretaker, no matter who it was mom, dad, grandparents, aunts, uncle, who, whoever. They did not establish a healthy pers 
um, relationships that leads to a healthy personality. And number four in the class would be healthy lifestyle. Now don't let your mind wander. I'm talking about things that we would all agree on. I'm talking about getting drunk every night or bullying people um, or putting pills in young ladies' drinks, hoping that they'll be too unconscious to stop a sexual advance. Come on. Why are we not teaching our young men don't do that? I hope you support that initiative. That's what we should be supporting as mental health professionals is a class in every high school that gets them thinking about their life. How do you live a healthy life right now and in the years to come? The second thing, though, to be more specific that I came up with after this shooting that APA and, T and um, ACA and AAMFT should all be supporting, and the other APA, the psychiatrist, of course, should be supporting <clears throat> an organization in each and every state whose job it is to take is to take phone calls from people who are saying, I'm worried about this young man, okay? There's a lot of, of talk about having a way of reporting when somebody looks like they're getting ready to commit a criminal act of violence. Well, of course, that's very important. But there's a lot more that young people do. Uh, they're isolating and they're saying that they might end their own life. And they're behaving in a very depressed way and yet we don't really have a number that they can call. There was something on TV the other day, a woman was saying, who do we call? How do we find out? How do we get help? And my response is, well, I'm confused why they can't just Google psychotherapists, psychologists, family therapists, because the names of all your local mental health professionals will come up. That's where you get help. So why didn't Dr. Worrell write a letter saying we've got to get mental health into our high schools and we've got to find the young men who are slipping in this direction and get them help? He had stopped going to class, so when he found out that he wasn't graduating, he was angry, so he just dropped out. He and his mom were in such a conflictual relationship that the police were being called. And then I guess his mom kicked him out. He went over to live with grandparents for a few months. Well, they were distant and busy. His grandfather said, I get up and leave at five o'clock in the morning. Well, okay, but don't you come back about 3.30 or four and that, that's the time you spend with your grandson, helping him with his homework and maybe taking him fishing so that you can establish a healthy adult child relationship. And the father, who's the most important guy, he lived a little bit distant and didn't spend any time with his son. I forgot I had a son and a daughter that needs my love and attention. These are the things that APA should be writing about in the letter, okay? And these are the two initiatives that if we're going to get together and we're going to have meetings whether it's the governor of Texas or whether it's Senator John Cornyn, one of four that are going to be having meetings and looking into this, this is what they need to be considering. I'm not saying they shouldn't consider gun control. I'm in favor of that to a certain degree, but that's not my field of expertise. This is not what I have 200 graduate hours in. My 200 graduate hours are in psychology, counseling, and family therapy. That's what I do. So this is how I can help. And so I would like to gently and respectfully ask Dr. Worrell to rewrite the letter and really emphasize mental health. Now let me read what he said, just to say that he gets a little close to it toward the end. We can't become numb to gun violence, okay? We need to promote mental health educators and community advocates to de-escalate situations with individuals. Okay, you had me there for a minute, Dr. Worrell, but de-escalate is a police term. They use that term when they're in a tense situation and the guy's upset and he's got a gun. They learn how to de-escalate the situation. 
the word that should be used by a psychologist is we need to learn how to depathologize the young man. Because anybody who gets a gun and kills 19 innocent children and two beautiful adults is psychopathological. He needs to be dealt with on that level. Of course, I've discussed how we might be able to do that, but we need to have people in every section of every state in the country who's ready to at least make a phone call and ideally to go to the home. Now, some people are saying, well, what about CPS? Well, thank you, Child Protective Services, for all the work you do, but they're not really designed to deal with what we're dealing with here. There was no apparent, anyway, child abuse going on. It was just difficult family relationships. And when a child, when a 17-year-old starts acting out, CPS isn't the right organization. It's somebody who's just looking out after the mental health of the young person. So let's get focused. Please, all you psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors, marriage and family therapists especially, let's get focused on getting the help that these young men need by calling them or going to their house and saying, we have some names of family therapists for you or psychology family therapists who will help you with your relationships so that your son won't get a gun and go into the school and commit gun violence. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for caring. Now let's work together to move forward with this issue. Bye for now.